Hi and welcome to the Scrapbook Pal YouTube channel. This is Colleen Beamish from Humor Bean Cards and today I am very excited to be using some new products from Lawn Fawn that are now available at scrapbookpal.com. So to start I have the Lawn Fawn My Rainbow Stamps and Dies. This is a super cute set featuring a rainbow, a little unicorn, even a little fairy and some sparkles. And then I'll also be using the Give It a Whirl Dies and Add-on Dies. This is such a fun um, mechanism for your cards to make them interactive where the initial image whirls around to then reveal a secondary image. And then lastly, I have the cloud background stencils. All of these products work really great together and today I will show you just one way you can use all of them to make a fun interactive card. So let's get to it. I have my mini Misty here and I'm getting ready to do some stamping. I have the two cloud images from the stamp set and then the paper that I'm stamping onto is just some computer paper. What I will be doing is creating the masks um, for my clouds. So that's why I'm using just thin computer paper and my stamped image doesn't have to be perfect. You can use masking paper for this, but I figure it's just as easy um, to use computer paper and some temporary adhesive later on. So to create my masks, I am fussy cutting out each clouds. Each cloud, what's great about this is that um, these images are super simple, which means that they are very easy to fussy cut and they shouldn't be you know, too much of a hassle um, to cut accurately. I'm just cutting right along that black border. You don't want to leave a gap like the white border that you may leave if this were going to be a focal image on your card. So once I have those two clouds cut out, I set them aside and now I'm going to start working on the initial image of the card. So this will be the card when the recipient first opens the envelope and takes it out. This is what we'll be showing. So I want my clouds to be in the forefront of the scene. It's not really a scene. It's a sky scene, I suppose. So um, I want these clouds to be in the forefront, and that's why I'm stamping them first, and then I'm going to mask them off. So you can see here I have that circle die. That is what is part of the mechanism. So everything needs to fit within that circle. So I'm just using that to kind of figure out the spacing of my clouds. And then I am going to go ahead and stamp them down here. So um, this paper I have is 110 pound uh, white cardstock. And it's just cut to a four and a quarter by five and a half to make things simple. But I will be die cutting this, um, this section out into that circle that I just showed before. So once I have stamped down those clouds, now I have those masks that I just created. And I'm taking some Tombow temporary adhesive tape runner and just sticking those right over top of the stamped image. Um, this will make sure that when I am stenciling, um, which is our next step, that these two clouds will not be stenciled over. So now I have the cloud background stencils. This set actually has two stencils in it, so I just have the first one here. Um, and also, I don't want you to get confused because I actually attempted to create this card once, um, which I filmed initially, and then I messed it up, so then I tried again. So you're seeing the second attempt, and that's why the masks went from being white to gray. But those clouds are still masked off. They're still white underneath that piece of um, computer paper. And now I'm using some Distress Oxide ink in the color Weathered Wood um, and a ink blending brush and just kind of um, throwing some ink over that stencil. I'm not too worried about having a super perfect stenciled image. I think what's fun about this is that no cloud looks exactly the same. There's a lot of flexibility there. And so I'm kind of just... Um, I'm actually kind of purposely being uneven. So like some clouds are darker than others. Um, and then I'm just trying to kind of do the center of this um, card panel because not all of it is actually going on the card. So I'll continue to add some ink uh, all over. This is the second layer of the cloud stencils, which um, it actually has the outline of the opposite layer. So like when I want to line it up, you can. Um, 
you can kind of see it there as I pick up the stencil. But now I, I decided I wanted to add some more clouds. So I'm just picking it up and moving it around to see um, where do I want to fill the gaps with more clouds. And then I'm just inking over those specific openings. Um, if you wanted to be really specific with it, you could definitely go in with a smaller blending brush, but I wasn't too worried about it. Now I'm just going rogue and I'm just adding ink um, all over the background. I want it to look like a stormy, cloudy day. Um, so again, I'm bringing that dye back in just to see like, where am I at? Where do I need more ink? Um, what is looking good, bad, etc. Um, and yeah, I decided I wanted more clouds. I want it to look really stormy. Um, so I just keep going, just keep adding more clouds, more ink blending. I will say, so this is my second attempt, as I mentioned before, and I will say the first attempt was a little better, <laughs> in my opinion. Um, I feel like that's inevitable that your second attempt will always kind of be not what it was. Anyway, so I remove the masks and you can see that it is bright white underneath. And I didn't want it to be bright white. I wanted the storminess to continue. So I went back in with some more ink and I might have overdone it a little bit. But the other cool thing about um, adding the ink over top is that it does kind of blend out the background a little bit more. So some of the clouds become a little less defined. Um, and I actually like that effect. It does kind of look like rain is coming in a way. Um, so once I'm happy with how all the inking looks and the level of gloominess, then I'm ready to stamp down my sentiment. So from the My Rainbow stamp set, I'm using the sentiment on a cloudy day, and that will carry over to the secondary sentiment, um, which you'll see in just a minute. But this kind of finishes my initial image. So now I'm stamping down what will be the secondary image, what will be behind that first cloudy image. And this will say, you are my rainbow. Um, so overall the sentiment of the card on a cloudy day you are my rainbow so I'm stamping that with some black ink again on that same 110 pound white cardstock I'm double stamping it just to make sure I get a very solid image and then I'm going to mask off the clouds again so I'm just reusing that same mask I didn't cut new ones or anything um, that's the fun thing about masks is that you can save them with the stamp set and use them over and over again so I'm masking off the clouds and then I have the rainbow stamp from the stamp set and I'm just lining that up. Um, the reason I masked off for this is that again, I want the clouds to be in the forefront and I want the rainbow to look like it's coming out of one cloud and going into the other. And you'll see here, once I stamp it down and I remove the masks, it looks like it's one solid image. And I'm really happy with how this turned out. I thought about adding some more. Like I said, the stamp set has a unicorn and fairies and sparkles. Um, but I wanted to keep it pretty simple for this card. Um, and I always th I was thinking when I was first um, stamping that out that I could go back and add more. But I decided not to. So I went ahead and die cut out that first image using the circle die. Um, you'll see here that what is unique about this is that it has a slit going halfway across the circle. Now I just take my nail and I rub it along that um, the paper, the edges, um, just because there's some like little paper sliver thingies and I want them gone so that it's a nice smooth um, edge. And then I do the same thing with the other image. I went in and I did some very, very simple Copic coloring just to add the rainbow colors. And then this scallop circle is from the add-on die set. So there is a large circle in the regular die set, but if you want that scalloped edge, then you need to get the add-on. I don't think I mentioned before that all of the products I use in today's video will be linked down in the description below, and also they are all available at scrapbookpal.com, so be sure to check that out. Now I'm moving on to my card base. So I just have some navy blue cardstock here, and I actually am making a square card. So it's four and a quarter by four and a quarter, which means before I scored it, it was four and a quarter by eight and a half. I scored it at four and a quarter. And yeah, with my bone folder, I enforced that fold. And now I have the, I believe this is called the diamond and floral tiles die cover plate. 
but it might be the opposite, floral and diamond tiles. Either way, it's from Pink Fresh Studio. It's linked down in the description. And I die cut it out and then I cut it down so it was square to go onto the card front. And I'm just using some um, liquid glue here. This is the Barely Arts liquid glue to put some glue on the back of that to stick it down to my card base. I was just kind of all over the place with the glue. But the cool thing about the Barely Arts glue is that it has that super fine tip. So it makes it easy to not put glue where you don't want it. Obviously, I sped this up a bit, but I used the corner of my score pal thing. You could also use your Misty to put that square directly onto my card base. Okay, now I'm getting ready to assemble the mechanism. And I'll be honest, this part was tricky. It threw me through a loop. Um, I think practice is necessary. So this is actually my second or third attempt. Um, you take that little rectangle and it has a score line on it. You die cut it out. Now what I've seen is that people recommend using just computer paper for this, a thin type of paper. But when I was practicing, the thin paper was ripping. So um, right now I'm using computer paper, but I actually go back in with a heavier weight cardstock because it just was not working out for me. And you're going to take that folded piece and you're going to put glue just on one side of it and glue it above the slit. So right now my circle is upside down, but when it was right side up, it's above the slit with the fold on the slit. Be sure, like if you're trying this for the first time, which I was here, um, you're going to want to just like watch a couple videos to see like how to go about it. And it's a little confusing too because the background is my first attempt at the cloud stenciling. So just disregard that. On yours, it would probably be white. And then I die cut out a second circle with the slit in it. Um, it's the same exact die. I just die cut it out of some heavyweight cardstock. I put glue on the tab, the side of the tab that was showing. And then I attached the secondary circle to it. So now you can see that the tab is the only thing connecting these two circles. Otherwise, it's completely loose. I made sure to let that dry. And then I'm going to cut out this piece. Um, this is a little handle so that the recipient can give it a whirl. Um, so I die cut that out and then I'm adding glue just to this bottom half. And that's what's going to kind of um, nestle into our mechanism. Sorry, the focus is kind of off here. I hadn't noticed that when I was filming it. But now I'm going to tuck this right into the circle. So it's just glued onto the back of that front image. You can kind of see here. And you want to make sure that glue isn't, you know, sticking to anything else so that it can spin as needed. So this part of the mechanism is all set. Um, it's pretty straightforward. And um, the next part, I would say assembling it in the next part is a little trickier. Um, but we're going to turn both pieces over. We're going to take the piece that has that tab right on it. See here how I'm lift separating the front from the back. And I'm putting that right into that scallop circle um, slit there. And then that's it. It doesn't lay perfectly. Um, and you kind of have to finagle it a couple times to get it working. But it's, it's an amazing mechanism. It's very cool. And it looks like you're transitioning from one image to another. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I had a little bit of difficulty. I think maybe I was overthinking it. Um, but it did take a little bit of practice. And then so now I'm getting ready to add this to my card front. So I'm taking some foam tape and I'm just cutting very, very skinny strips of foam tape. And then I'm going to put that around the edge of the scalloped um, piece. You see how there's kind of that stitching line. It's a decorative stitching line, but I'm kind of keeping the foam tape as far to the edge, like on that stitching line as I can. Um, the, the center circle needs some room to kind of wiggle around. Um, so if you put the tape too close, it will hinder the mechanism's ability to spin. So I needed a little bit more, so I went ahead and cut another strip of foam tape. They do sell um, 
skinny strips of foam tape. However, I didn't have any on hand. So whatever foam tape you have, or you can even use foam squares as long as it's not too wide and isn't hindering that circle. So I removed the backing, all of the backing of the, um, the, you know, the stuff that makes it not sticky, the release tape. So I remove all of the release tape in order to be able to bend the uh, foam tape around the circle. Okay, this part's really simple. You're just going to stick it onto the card and hope that it whirls around once it gets there. <clears throat> Sorry, my throat is uh, getting a little scratchy here. But um, the last finishing touch is the um, decorative part of that little tab. So it just has an arrow on it so people know when they receive the card that you can use the tab to spin the image. So again, I just have some liquid glue and I'm using that same navy blue cardstock for the tab. Um, I like that it die cuts out the arrow too, so whatever background color comes through there. And then yeah, that just about finishes it up. Now I will say you can definitely go in and add some more details and you can also add some die cuts. Um, you don't want it to be too bulky, especially that front um, image. That's why I did masking and that's why all of it is just one layer stamping. But you can add a little bit and you could also, I was might go back even and add some glitter, um, Winks of Stella to the rainbow. Um, but yeah, I love how this turned out. I think it's such a sweet sentiment and such a fun card. And I think the recipient will really get a kick out of it. So thank you so much for watching today's video. Please give this video a thumbs up and be sure to follow Scrapbook Pal here on YouTube. Um, subscribe to their channel because there's constantly some wonderful crafty inspiration here. So um, thanks so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.